There are people who choose to make a positive difference in the world. Our job is to bring you their stories to motivate you to do the same. Join us each week, host John Alexander and Naima Latif, as we bring you the educators, entertainers, elected officials, religious leaders, and community activists whose works are transforming this world. Find out how you can make a difference too. Be inspired. Watch the Media Connection. We're here at the national headquarters of the Rainbow Push Coalition on January 1st, 2013. And this is the 150th anniversary of the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation by President Abraham Lincoln. Let's listen to Reverend Jesse Jackson as he gives us the inside story about this historic day. Well, we celebrate today and commemorate the um, Emancipation Proclamation, 100. In 50 years, signed at 2 p.m. this afternoon, 150 years ago, the many of us were reminded to prepare this year to observe 50 years since the march in Washington, 1963. Mama. Reminded to observe the Dr. King speech called "I Have a Dream" speech Mama. in 1963. Mama. It would be a misnomer to observe the speech and refer to it as the I Have a Dream speech because that's not what it was. It was the broken promise speech. He said, we gather here today in the majestic shadows of the Lincoln Monument. A hundred years ago, you promised the emancipation. We got the proclamation, but not the emancipation. And the Congress, standing before me a hundred years ago, Mama. you promised. He said a hundred years later, the promise has not been honored. Mama. It's a bad promissory note. Bounce check. Mama. Mark insufficient funds. Mama. Therefore, he says, I dream of a day you will honor the broken promise. The promise was the promise made January 1st, 1863 with the Emancipation, Second Emancipation Proclamation signed December 6, 1865, 13th Amendment should pass. The day we marched, it's all right, the day we marched in Washington after the promise had been made a hundred years before Mama. about full citizenship, in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, Georgia, mm -hmm. South, North Carolina, Florida, Mama. Maryland, black like people could not use a single public toilet. Mama. We were veterans of foreign wars had to sit behind knots of POWs on American military bases. In many parts of the South, our money was counterfeited. We could not buy ice cream at Howard Johnson's. We could not rent a room in the Holiday Inn. Citizens without the right to vote. So I dream of a day, so I dream I dream of a day, day when the promise will be on it. The day we commemorate a hundred and fifty years later, the promise made. We commemorate the Emancipation Proclamation, which led to the 13th Amendment, the abolition of slavery. Our tradition is not it's not an immigrant tradition. Immigrant. This is a tradition, is a tradition. where people, people were bought, were bought and, sold and sold as, as the cheapest commodity cheapest for 244 200 years. years. More valuable, More valuable than, land, than land, land, banks, banks and insurance companies. And insurance was the buying and selling of people from Africa. In the end, that struggle, so divisive, 
so violent, and so dangerous, driven by the Civil War, led to saving the Union and ending slavery and assuring dignity by law to all American citizens. And I'm here with another great legend, the Reverend Mother Helen Sinclair, known as the one who has kept alive the prison ministry that has definitely had an impact on men and women who are striving for freedom. Now this significant day as we talk about the 150th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation, we realize that prison is really a continuation of that slave system. So what can we do to inspire young people and old people to know that history and make a connection so they can be inspired to fight to overcome the enslavement of our people? I think we have to do what uh, we did when my children were coming up. We have to bring them to uh, places like the Rainbow Push Coalition where there's all kinds of history but there's also uh, advanced knowledge of things that are coming and things that have already happened. And uh, whenever there's an opportunity, try and go and learn. You, you can't keep yourself stuck in some of the foolishness on, on some of the TV shows. I was impressed because I love the song of John Brown's body. And I remember about he and his sons, you know, that they were uh, for freedom. And uh, yesterday we were going to Dixon Prison and we passed by Sycamore where there was an underground railroad. And I'm always trying to get the history of why there were some people that, that said they would not have slavery in Illinois. And people don't realize there were people all the time who were against slavery. If there hadn't have been, it would have been a hard fight by ourselves, I think. But I appreciate Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson because he just teaches and gives you so much information that we really need for our children and our children's children. And it's making me really go farther back in history to find out about my grandfather and great-grandfather. And I was real pleased the other day some lady called me up when she found out I was from Hot Springs, Arkansas. And she started telling me the history of Hot Springs, which means I'll know my father's side. And then when I go down to Louisiana and then on to Stamps, Arkansas, I'll know my mother's side. So it's very exciting to hear your history because without a history, people perish. That's right. Yeah, and as they say, with uh, history is like a uh, tree without roots, and a tree will not grow. Yes. Naima, thank you so very much. Well, thank you. I love this today. Yes, well, thank you for being part of the living history that we can continue to experience through you. And mm -hmm. we appreciate the fact that you somehow, in 92 years, are still going strong. And you trying to learn it more every day. I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> and I'm trying to write it and so I can let my children know. All right, well, this is another one. We've got a book coming out. We're going to make sure oh, yeah. you get that book out to, yes, to the future generations. <laughs> right. <laughs> when this emancipation have been signed after many years mm -hmm. of struggle to get to this point, which I'm sure Jenna will interpret today. Mm -hmm. Words of Frederick Douglass in his 1876 Freedman's Monument speech, Douglass said, can any colored man or any white man friendly to the freedom of all men ever forget the night which followed the first day of January 1863? Mm -hmm. And the world was to see if Abraham Lincoln would prove to be as good as his word. Mm. I shall never forget that memorable night when in a distant city I waited and watched the public meeting mm -hmm. with 3,000 others not less anxious than myself <coughs> for the word of deliverance which we have heard read today. Mm. Nor shall I ever forget the outburst of joy and thanksgiving to rent the air when the lightning brought to us the Emancipation Proclamation. In that happy hour, we forgot all delay, for there had been delays, forgot all tardiness, forgot that the President had bribed the rebels to lay down their arms by a promise, withhold the boat which would smite the slave system with destruction. We were thenceforth willing to allow the President all the latitude of time phraseology and every honorable device that statesmanship might require for the achievement of a great and beneficial, beneficent measure of liberty and progress. The reason I want us to etch this deep into our
consciousness. One thing we learn from the Jewish tradition of observations, when Joshua and the children of Israel got across the Jordan River, Hallelujah. <coughs> they figured they couldn't get across. Well, well. They didn't get across because they could swim so well, uh -huh. and they were engineers to stop the flow of the waters. Alright. But God intervened. God. And did for Hallelujah. them what they could not do for themselves. Alright. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And those who got across without mud on their shoes without drowning. Oh, man. Celebrating, Lord. having big fun. And uh, the writer said, I want 12 men to go and each get a stone representing his tribe, a big rock, and put it down in the bed of the river. Someone said, why would we put it in the bottom of the river? You cannot see the bottom of the river. And we're not going back. Why would you put these stones in the bottom? of the river. And this answer is simply this, the reason I asked you to bring your children today. He said that in time to come, your children will ask you how we got across. Tell them that they might know. But if you do not tell them, they will not know. And they will ascribe by getting across right. the false gods right. and Amen. make the real God angry. Come on. False They'll be rapping rather than praying because they just don't know. The Tell them that they God. might know. They might kill themselves in Inglewood and yes. Rose and in Lundell yes. because they just don't know the oh, price yeah. you pay yes. to live. They what won't know. And so that, that's one verse. Another in the Proverbs urges us to remove not the ancient landmarks which our mothers and fathers have set. These are frames of reference. This is not hammocks and greens for good luck, the ball game for relaxation. This is the end of 244 years of slavery. I'm 71. My father was 34 when I was born. He would be 105 today. My grandmother was enslaved. Her parents were born in slavery. I am the fourth generation out of slavery. We have been, we were enslaved. See, we were enslaved longer than we have been free. We were enslaved longer than we have been free. We have been free for 150 years. We were enslaved 244 years. I'm here with three firemen and four firemen. Fantastic. Here with four firemen and we know the history of the firefighters here in the city of Chicago. What did you think as you heard Reverend Jackson speak about the history of how we got free and the Emancipation Proclamation and how that's affecting us today? How did that affect you hearing that? Oh, it affected me greatly. I'm uh, really glad that I came here today. I brought my son out today because I wanted him to hear this because we were here last week and uh, we were talking with Reverend Jackson and when they were talking today, when uh, Jonathan Jackson was talking, I was asking my son, I said, do you understand everything that he's saying? You understand why we call it watch service at midnight? And he was blown away by that and he had he had no idea what was going on and uh, he also said he wanted to ask his history teacher a couple of questions too because he heard some stuff today that he hasn't heard at school and I thought that was very important I thought it was really moving I, I was I'm very glad I came yes. now how do you feel about that based on the struggle that the firemen have had to try to get equality here in the city today was a really enlightening day for me as well and um, as for, for the black firefighters, the struggles that we've come through in the 150 year anniversary, seeing this here and, and hearing all the history and, and how we got to this point was really important. So it was a great day. Well, thank you so much. And let me ask you this question. Do you have any children? 
I do, and they're with me today. Um, all three of my children are here with me today, and along with my wife, and we want to make sure we came out for this historical event. We were also here Saturday for the firefighters' prayer, so we came back so that my kids could witness this uh, historical event. You're doing a great job, and our last fireman here. Now, how are you going to get this message out to young people who need to know more about our history? Yeah, like he said, uh, you know, we're going to post this on our, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to post this, uh, we're going to place this on our refrigerator, you know, and just as a reminder, and you know, make some copies, and I'm going to have my son, you know, pass it out in his school, just so everybody should be able to know this, you know, the 150 years is just great, so. We just blessed to be here, and I too bought my family as well. So, That's great. well, here you have it: the 150th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation here at the national headquarters of Rainbow Push. The Washington Strip was not designed for good guys to go to church and bad guys go to the club. At that time, we were not free to go to the church. Period. At midnight. Period. It was not a church meeting except in Boston or up north. Please hear me now. They had been told a hundred days before 1863, if the South does not join, rejoin the Union, we are going to, we're going to set the slaves free. They, that's why, that's why Douglas kept saying that all the tardiness and all of the and so come December, they were not looking forward to Santa Claus. Rudolph and gifts and red and green lights. They were looking forward to freedom. Freedom! So come December 31st, they couldn't sleep like a child waiting for Santa Claus. They watched and prayed and sang all night long. There was no CNN. There was no wire service waiting to see if Lincoln would sign the document he promised, which Fred Douglas called his word. Would he honor his promise? Would he honor the note that Santa is about to read? Because of that, we set in motion these forces, and we got our freedom in 1865. Lincoln was killed because of that in a greater measure. Hear me if you please. Statue of Liberty is a gift given to America by the French abolitionists mm -hmm. congratulating America for ending slavery. We now see it as the welcoming for Europeans coming into New York Harbor. Statue of Liberty is a gift from the, if you go to France on the Seine River today, you will see a Statue of Liberty, mm -hmm. a much smaller version, because that was a gift given to us to congratulating for ending slavery Mama. and saving the Union. Mama. Some want to call Thanksgiving Day as a national holiday. It always was a celebration of the season of the reaping of the harvest. But Lincoln declaring thanks to God Amen. for saving the union, ending slavery, in fact, as a national holiday. That's driven by the slavery tradition Amen. as well. Even more Memorial Day. Amen. The black soldier in Richmond, Virginia, they would march around the graveyards of the whites who came south, north, south to help free them, mm -hmm. and they memorialized those whites in which was a protest march, because mm -hmm. whites in south resented their having come <coughs> south for freedom. Mm -hmm. So whether it's Memorial Day, or Thanksgiving Day, Man. or the Statue of Liberty, all rooted in this issue of slavery. We shall have many classes in Raymond Bush this year, then this year of commemoration. Man on teaching these things that we might know. I'm here with Shondell Stiles, one of the young people who just heard this fascinating information about our history. What did you think as you listened to Reverend Jackson speak? I think it was great and you would learn more from a person who's been through it all, whether how if you're in the class, like it teaches you something different, it don't go into details. It, it's like it tells you what you read out of a book, like what you want to hear and not what you're supposed to hear. So I think you will learn more from a person who's been through it all. Oh, yeah. How will you share this with your peers? <laughs> I would share them that it's something I would recommend them to get into and to come here, and it's a great experience. And yeah. Thank you so much. Will yes, you be coming I, back to I push? I will definitely come again.
It's a must. All right. Look forward to seeing you again. All right. Well, Santita now will come and read for us this document which drove our freedom, drove the freedom agenda, led to Lincoln's assassination. Amen. Amen. The Emancipation Proclamation by the President of the United States of America, a proclamation. Whereas on the 22nd day of September in the year of our Lord, 1862, a proclamation was issued by the President of the United States containing, among other things, the following, to wit, that on the first day of January, in the year of our Lord, 1863, all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state, the people whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States, shall be then thenceforward and forever free. And the executive government of the United States, including the military and naval authority thereof, will recognize and maintain the freedom of such persons and will do no act or act to repress such persons or any of them in any efforts they may make for their actual freedom. Now therefore I, Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States, by virtue of the power in me, vested as Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy of the United States in time of actual armed rebellion against the authority and government of the United States, and as a fit and necessary war measure for suppressing said rebellion, for the full period of 100 days from the day first above mentioned, order and designate as the states and parts of states wherein the people thereof respectively are in this day in rebellion against the United States. And so I, Abraham Lincoln, do order and declare that all persons held as slaves within said designated states and parts of states are and henceforward shall be free. And that the executive government of the United States, including the military and naval authorities thereof, will recognize and maintain the freedom of such persons. And I hereby enjoin upon the people so declared to be free to abstain from all violence unless in necessary self-defense. And I recommend to them that in all cases, when allowed, they labor faithfully for reasonable wages. And I further declare and make known that such persons of suitable condition will be received into the armed service of the United States to garrison forts, positions and stations and other places, and to man vessels of all sorts in said service of their freedom. And upon this act, sincerely believed to be an act of justice, warranted by the Constitution of the United States upon military necessity, I invoke the considerate judgment of mankind and the gracious favor of Almighty God. It witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the United States to be affixed to this, done at the city of Washington, this first day of January in the year of our Lord, 1863, and of the independence of the United States of America the 87th, by the President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, and William H. Seward, the Secretary of State. And now I'm here with the legendary Reverend Willie Taplin Barrow, one of the founding members of Rainbow Push, and somebody who motivates young people and old people and keeps this movement going forward. As you listen to this information, how did it affect you thinking about what was really happening 150 years ago as President Lincoln read the Emancipation Proclamation. It was very, very interesting 
because it was information that even my age group, and I'm 88, didn't know about. I think Jonathan was just absolutely wonderful. I really enjoyed it, and I think we need to pass it on to our young people so that they will know whose shoulders, just like my generation, must know whose shoulders we stand on. And the younger generation got to know whose shoulders they stand on. It was marvelous. I learned a lot. I was so glad. And thank you for inviting me. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for coming. Now, one last question coming up. Who were some of the women that you look to and whose shoulders you feel as you stand on? Oh, Eddie White as a labor leader, that was my, she, she brought me into the labor movement. Dorothy Height and, uh, 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 and Dorothy Wright and uh, Ro, uh, what's her name? Oh, uh, brought me into the... Uh, uh, did, you, did you know Fannie Lou Hamer? Had Fannie you had met her? Hamer, all of them stayed in my house. Oh, yeah. I think you told us Rosa Parks stayed at your house sometimes. Rosa well. Park, Fannie Lou Hamer, and all of, all of them, because they couldn't stay in hotels. Mm. And, and because they couldn't stay in hotels, my house was open. So I stand on all of them shoulders, <laughs> and I give them credit. And, uh, and I just want the young people to have that desire to learn and to be powerful and to be unafraid uh, to take a stand with what they believe. And that is my commitment to, young, to this generation, is so we can continue the movement because it's not over yet. You're right, it's not over yet. Mm -mm. Well, thank you for being part of that movement that keeps us moving forward. And I'm Naima Latif for the Media Connection. We'll see you again next time. There are people who choose to make a positive difference in the world. Our job is to bring you their stories to motivate you to do the same. Join us each week, host John Alexander and Naima Latif, as we bring you the educators, entertainers, elected officials, religious leaders, and community activists whose works are transforming this world. Find out how you can make a difference too. Be inspired. Watch the Media Connection. <laughs>